Oh, chicken. Mm. I used to chill around and kill it on a George Foreman grill, but now I'm chilling here with like Steve and Foreman skill. What? That's how we kick it. People like my style, just like the chicken lick it. Uh. <laughs> okay, I haven't freestyled in a while. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to Big English Stand Up. Thank you for listening. What a special guest in the building. With me today is Mumsy! All the way from South Africa. I respect that, that you introduce yourself with one name. Just <laughs> one name and one name alone. Mumsy, like Cher or Madonna. Bono. Or Beyonce. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is. <laughs> there is a guy in there. Yeah, that the, the little Irish guy. The little Irish guy. Just Bono. the little Irish guy. Do you know, I saw him once. I saw him once when I was in Saint Tropez. Really? And he is really fucking short. I heard he's a short little. Oh, man. Short little short. He's really short, like, you know, to be playing rock and roll. You know, but that that's what he decided to do. He decided to play rock and roll. And I think that's why he became the singer, you know? Yeah. I don't think he was tall enough to play the bass. <laughs> oh! <laughs> be too heavy for him, wouldn't it? They well, do be about the heavy. right size. <laughs> those, those bass guitars get pretty heavy, don't they? Yeah. I've never, I've actually, I've, 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 I've never been good at instruments. I'd always love to play an instrument. I just think that it's so cool that... You know when you you know sometimes when you watch like uh, comedians and they're really funny and then all of a sudden they pick up an instrument and yeah. it just changes the whole dynamic of the show. Yeah. I wish I could play something. Maybe there's, I should start learning the kazoo. There's still time, man. Yeah. Kazoo, yeah. Kazoo is good. I've seen some funny shit with kazoos actually on stage. Really? Yeah. If you if you kind of twist it, make it funny. I think you really got to be very talented to make a kazoo funny. Yeah. You yeah. know with the, when it comes to sort of musical instruments and things like that, the person that really kind of like, you know, Jeff Ross. Yes. He's a genius. Mm. He spent his entire life uh, <laughs> finding ways to make fun of people. He's the roast master general. And I just found out that, like, when he was young, he played the guitar a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he was really in love with rock music. He still is, if you listen to his podcast. Um, and then I just remember thinking, see, that's it. as a young person, he was finding his way. He, he could see that he was creative. He was attracted to the guitar. Yeah. But, turns out, he's got a massive talent for roasting you know what i mean yeah, yeah like it was it was part of the process i think that's quite interesting big up jeff ross by the way yeah if you're looking for a funny podcast to listen to jeff ross is very funny but it helps if you know what what who he is and what he's all about mm. so dude how long have you been in moscow what are you doing here what are you doing here <laughs> So I, 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 can't, I came to Moscow in February uh, last year. Um, there was a girl that I met in Cape Town. She was Russian. She invited me up here. I thought, cool, mm. I'll come here for a three-month vacation. And now I have been here for uh, close to a year. Yeah. Yeah, it's 11 months and, uh, I don't know, 28 days, 13 seconds. You're getting, uh, you're getting the real winter now, a little bit last week or two, yeah? Yeah. How you this is real. About that? It's very real. Uh, we we uh, we when I use the temperatures like this, um, mm. it's not very often that I that I actually have to like take mm -hmm. a shower just to remind myself that I do actually um, have a penis. <laughs> uh, <so. laughs> how long did that take? First first mention of the uh, how long did that it didn't take a few minutes. Okay, so uh, tell me about yourself, man. We've uh, we've just met, so you're from South Africa. I've seen your stand up. Very good. Thank tell you. us a little bit about yourself, man. Imagine so, you're on a radio station. All right, so um, I uh, I come from South Africa. Uh, I was born in a time that was uh, quite complicated in South Africa, apartheid. Most people, some people know about it. A lot of Russians might not know about it. Uh, and uh, but I was educated in a private school. So it caused a lot of complications for me. People used to tease me all the time when I was chilling with my black friends. They would call me the snob when I was chilling with like, you know, white friends in the suburbs. They would like call me the poor boy. So it was like I got teased from all angles. And like most comedians, you know, when we find ourselves in the periphery, uh, we observe and uh, somehow we convert it. And then we just send it back to them uh, with awards and amazing shows. Hey! <laughs> That makes perfect sense. I'll tell you, well, let's get all the South African thing out of the way then, yeah. first of all. And I was just saying to you earlier, there's there's at least three South African things which have blown my mind. Mm -hmm. The first one 
would be, is it District 9? Oh, yeah, the movie District 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That blew my... What a great movie that is. <laughs> if you like science fiction uh, social parodies, District 9, fantastic uh, science fiction movie. I'm still... I'd be very interested to know what happened to that director because that was something, right? Yeah, that was actually... He actually... Uh, the last time that I followed up with him, he went to do to direct some stuff in the States. Mm. So he was working on some big projects. I can't remember. I'll Google it later. Mm. Um, yeah, you guys can Google it if you're listening in. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, no, he's doing good work. Mm. He's doing great things. How did you... What did you think of that movie? I thought that movie was... Okay, so just to give you context, <laughs> when you... South Africa is a very... Um, uh, I wouldn't say we we uh, we're not we're not a racist country, but we just we can see racism everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because we've gone through so much nonsense. But we got we got to the point where, you know, uh, it was there was a conflict. People dealt with it. Some people were like, "Hey, I don't want that guy's skin near me." Hey, I don't want this guy's accent near me. And then there there was like a clash. And then after the clash, there was like a recovery, which mm -hmm. is which put South Africa quite quite far ahead in the sense of us being able to joke about that stuff. So we're very comfortable joking about it um, from both sides, from mm -hmm. every single every single spectrum of color. But the funny thing, though, is that because there's a comfortability with the past and with the recovery that we're going through and the processes that have happened, now people are very, very vocal when they watch movies like that mm -hmm. uh, based on their own perception of what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. So if, if anyone hasn't seen the movie, mm -hmm. okay, there's, uh, there's basically, there's like, uh, there's all these uh, prawns, right? Which... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Walking you... <laughs> uh, prawns, this human prawn. Yeah, human-sized prawns. So yeah. like human-sized, man-sized prawns yeah. walking around. And um, and basically the whole idea of it is that, you know, in, uh, in, in South Africa, there's a lot of illegal aliens, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the illegal aliens caused uh, what people started to call xenophobia, which was actually... Um, Oh, there's a lot of deep deepness going on here. Anyway, mm, it is pretty deep stuff. Yeah. A lot of people of color will watch it and think, "Oh, okay, they're trying to say that the prawns are black people," and then you'll have um, a lot of uh, foreigners saying, "Oh, the prawns are actually aliens," and then you'll have uh, locals just saying, "Oh my!" Like uh, um, uh, people of uh, uh, people like Caucasians will be like, and not Caucasian in the Russian Caucasian, Caucasian in the South African. Like <laughs> Caucasian means white; it doesn't mean black, like in Russia. Yeah. Not over um, here, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has their own perspective. My perspective on it, it was a well-produced movie. Um, I didn't need to see into any deep subtext. Mm. Uh, I love, uh, uh, I, forget, I forget his name, the main actor. I love him. He's really, really great. Loved him in, in the A-Team as well. So he's like super fantastic as an actor and he's really great with characters. I thought the storyline was, uh, was good, um, well-produced. It, it was tense. There was funny moments. Um, and the really cool thing for me is that when I watch a movie like that, there's about six or seven people when, when, when South African productions happen. There's, about, there's usually about six or seven, maybe even ten people who I know personally who are in the movie. Oh, yeah. So it's always good to see, like, a friend on, on, uh, on screen, you know, doing their thing. I love yeah. the movie. I thought it was great. Yeah. Okay, so a South African thing that I love, number two, is uh, I, love, I, I went to this music festival, right, yeah. in Moscow, in, in the north of Moscow, I kind of, because my mate, Chris, he was working for a PR company, a big PR company. Yeah. And he would, he would, uh, or was it his sister? His sister's a DJ and she knows lots of pop stars in the UK, one or the other. Anyway, pretty well connected dude, mm. right? So every now and again, he would just be like, yo, I got tickets for this. Do you want to come to this? Do you want to come to that? That was it. And we went to, uh, uh, we went to a music festival and it was good. It was good. The Prodigy. Oh, wow. Uh, were the headliners. So I got to see Keith Flint for the last time. God rest his soul. Um, and then we were leaving the festival and then there was another gig on. Mm. I'll never forget this. We were just kind of, it was, in a, it was in a park and we were just leaving the park. And then just on the right, all these people were going into some big building. It was like a hangar. It was a big building. Yeah. We went in there and there was another gig about to happen. And there was some people rapping on stage. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And then suddenly, um, 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 die, what are they called? Die Antwort came on. <laughs> I went to a Die Antwort gig yeah. by accident. Mm -hmm. And I have never, 
I've never seen anything like that. And I'm a gig goer. I've yeah. seen everybody, yeah, almost yeah. everybody. Yeah. I've never seen anything quite like that. That was, and Chris, who's who's the, the PR guy, he kind of, I remember him turning to me and says, you know what's really cool about this? Well, what's great about this is that it's anti-cool, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because in as you grow up, like you've got the cool kids, you've got the nerds who who turn into uh, tech millionaires these yeah, days, yeah. right? <laughs> Billionaires. <laughs> but you've got the cool kids, you've got the middle kids, you've, yeah, got, yeah. The, you've got the goths, you've got the freaks, you've got the geeks. And D and Ward are just like... We, are, we, we, don't, we don't care about we don't care about being cool. Yeah, they that just is cut through dull. The cut yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen I've never seen an act cut through that. And also, you must have seen his cartoon story about going playing basketball, banana pudding with Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. No. Oh, I'll send you that. Yeah, yeah, please. Send okay, everybody me. listening to this, please go on uh, YouTube and find Banana Pudding by Ninja. It's it's. One of the best cartoons ever made. Mm. So, how do you feel about them? So, I was actually, I was actually surprised when I got to Russia. I didn't realize how big they were. Oh, in they're Russia. pretty popular here, yeah. Because like yeah. everywhere, like um, everywhere, everywhere I go, I just keep hearing people playing. And it's weird because like in South Africa, like they were, they were, they were, they were okay. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, um, uh, it's like Trevor Noah, right? In South Africa, mm. he did really well. Like he did really well mm. for South African standards, but South African standards are not really. We were never really like you make it in South Africa, you're not going to become like a multi, multi, multi millionaire, you know. No. But when you go overseas and then you come back, mm. everyone has this perception of, oh mm. man, if they like you, then you must be amazing. Now you're mm. worth the money that I was spending on DVDs with other people online than I would with you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was actually really, I was really excited when I got here and, 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 and everyone was going crazy about um, uh, the ant word. Mm. It's actually the ant word. Everybody keeps saying die ant word, die ant word. Sounds like there's a word that an ant says that you really, really, really want to kill. It's not die ant word. It's the ant word. And what does it mean? The ant word is the answer. Ah, nice. Mm-hmm. Now it adds a little extra level of depth to their anti-establishment rhetoric. You know? mm. Mm. But I, I mean, I don't know if I can listen to all that music, but I love the videos and I like everything about them. <laughs> I like everything about them, everything else about them. And there's so much to talk about. Yeah. And also, and I saw them live. And if you ever get the chance to see them live, please do that. Do yourself a massive favor. Third fantastic South African item. Searching for Sugar Man. And uh, that is top tip, South African tip number three. And I don't even want to talk about it. Like, there's nothing to discuss. People should just watch it. Yeah. Um, because it's truly unbelievable. Uh, and it's all set in South Africa. Searching for Sugar Man. Um, and <laughs> there's just so many life lessons in there. That movie had such an effect on me i started writing like notes from it really yes wow yes are you a big fan though well yeah 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 Yeah. and then i went and downloaded all his music and it's great it's brilliant it's excellent and uh that's a great movie everybody and i I, it's just uh yeah incredible what did you think about that you saw it yeah I loved it. 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 You know, when it when, when when it came out, I was so excited because I kind of thought that there would be there would have been like more South Africans involved in the production of right. the, of the of the actual thing. Sure. Um, but um, no, I thought it was just, you know, when you when you th- there's so much there's so much of a history that's connected to um, that is connected to the past. I mean, apartheid ran for fifty years, so mm, it's it's fifty. It's, it's like it's very difficult to you know to think about anything without uh, of course you know can I have it's a ham like, and cheese sandwich like, like did you Union. separate the ham did you separate <laughs> the cheese huh apartheid's over why are you separating all the colors you know what I mean like it's very it's very difficult not to <laughs> like not to see um, not to see like how um, how the past could have affected us negatively but you watch the search for for, for sugar man is like oh, it's it was. What, there was one song that um, that really was um, the pinnacle for for white people in South Africa who were trying to make a difference in South Africa because they also didn't believe in the in the BS that was apartheid, you know. 
And for so many years, when you're stuck on those on, on two different sides of uh, of what could be an endless battle, you know, like racism is never going to end. But um, when you're stuck on two different sides, you see two completely different angles, and it's very hard for you to be able to heal or change yourself or become a better person if you don't step into the reality of that the of the other team's um, mentality. You know what I mean? So you know, like um, if two girls are having a cat fight, right? They're fighting the whole time, right? And, and and they don't even know what they're fighting about, you know? But at the end of it, like, you know, most men are just like, yeah, cat fight, cat fight, cat fight, <laughs> go into the mud, cat <laughs> fight. <laughs> <laughs> but what you'll find is that if those two girls, once they actually eventually talk to each other and they're like, you know what, I'm just angry because you said something bad about my breast. Mm. Like, well, you said something bad about my breast. Mm. Your breasts are actually quite nice. So are yours. And then what used to be cat fight, cat fight, cat fight. <laughs> <laughs> so I think when I when I was watching when I when I was watching the movie, you know, the the seeing how um seeing how like a lot of a lot of friends that I knew who are of color who had a very different perspective of like, you know, white people who they thought weren't contributing to to the struggle, they watched this and they were like Damn! So every single time that they were dancing and singing the song, like there was a much deeper meaning to it. It wasn't just like you know those white tracks that we tease them about. Do you know what I mean? It like it actually connected people in a way that. Um, Which song was it? Do you remember? Uh, it was um, um, Sugar Man. Sugar Man, yeah. Don't you worry, yeah. cause I'm tired of. And then and 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 they would always play it in clubs. Like it was oh, a really? it, it was a running joke for black people. Like we would. If you were at a club and there was like a lot of white people in the audience and you and you were a DJ, right? Because mm -hmm. being a South African DJ, you got to be flexible, right? So you look at the audience, you're like, you know, there's a whole lot of whole lot of white people. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to start with "Yeah, my mates and I will stand by you," and then maybe you just do a "I'm running my way downtown, down, 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 I'm soup deep tap and I'm home ground." <laughs> <laughs> and then Sugar Man, and you done it. That's the trifecta. You play that, you might even turn white. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> and you know, I want to. <laughs> What's that song? I don't even know what it's called. And I, don't I don't know what it's called, but I do. It's the, that chorus is like, <laughs> if I can walk into the sky, then you the life would pass me by. Oh, I'm becoming white, and you know, I. I walk a thousand miles just to see you <laughs> smile. <laughs> Wait for it. Diddle -diddle 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 -diddle. Oh, great, great. I see. Yeah. Well, I remember, like, I immediately, you know, told my brother about the movie and said, "You've got to watch this, though." And. um the two things I just really, it really, that res two of the many things that resonated. That's such mm. a deep film. But um, the first one was just how horrible South Africa was back yeah. then. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. No the jokes. behavior of the police, um, the, the people feeling really, the white people feeling really... Um, hemmed in like they they weren't allowed to they didn't feel like they could express themselves about how they felt uh, during that time which is something we would never look looking from the outside we would never consider that did you see that we would never think about that okay apartheid sure but there was a lot of frustration among mm -hmm. the whites too mm -hmm. because they were like yo what do you mean we can't even listen to this music or like what what yeah. Um, and the other thing was just how nasty the music business is because that guy just ripped him off. He just took all the money for years, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, you scumbag. That was crazy. I mean, the thing is, you know, when you look at, when you look at, um, it's, it's so difficult for me to like look at other industries and entertainment and not related to comedy, but like hmm. there are, there, even with that, uh, that scumbag, right? He was able to do that because there was an infrastructure or there was, um, there was at least like, uh, some kind of um, regulatory governing body that allowed for royalties. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like in comedy, you can't make royalties unless you make a DVD. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But we're always expected to make our own content, right? So mm -hmm. we're coming up with original content 24-7, mm -hmm. and it's very hard to copyright it because, you know, how do you copyright words? Mm -hmm. We never invented the words, you know? Mm -hmm. Musicians never in invented the notes, but they can compose them in certain ways. But it's very difficult to, you know, to do that with uh, with comedy. 
So that little son beige, son of a beige, I can't swear, so I'm just gonna say son of a beige. That son of a beige, <laughs> okay, took the money and um, and his behavior was absolutely shocking. Mm. But I kind of wish that I would even be in a position in comedy to have that done to me. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if there was at least that kind of money for someone to be a son of a bitch about, then yeah. he could be a son of a beige. I'd get three son of a beiges, you know what I mean? The more son of a beiges I have, the more money I'd be making. And you know what I mean? There's still time. There's still, there's still time for you to get ripped off by somebody for your work. I but can't don't, wait don't to get ripped don't off. Don't worry, man. Don't, don't give up on the dream. Wait. You have a dream. It's going to happen, all right? You know, uh, I, I think, I think uh, it was Nelson Mandela who said, I have a dream. Yes. That one day, the entertainers in the comedy industry <laughs> will be taken advantage of by some beiges, <laughs> some mama beiges, who will take money from them that they didn't even know that they could make. <laughs> <laughs> no. I took that speech from a friend of mine. Yeah. Martin Luther King. <laughs> you know what else was fun, of course, on the subject of South Africa. Mm. See, look at that. You know, I, I meet up with the South African comic. I've had so much to talk about. You guys have, you know, you've done a lot of stuff, mm. uh, which is which is not just good. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for example, what about the? Um, the speaking of, uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't do, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm not going to attempt, I'm not going to attempt. Please tell me what no. accent you're trying. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying my Nelson Mandela. <gasps> oh! No. Uh, uh, wow. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, no, but also the, the movie with Matt Damon where they, where they dramatized the 96 World Cup. Was it the 96 World Cup? Oh uh, yes, that okay. That so was that, pretty that was... fun, actually. Because I watched that. I was I Invictus. Yeah, Invictus. I, I, I watched. I I was really into rugby. I played rugby at school. Yeah, yeah. I watched that whole thing. So to see, was it Morgan Freeman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon <laughs> like playing out the World Cup and yeah. the politics behind it. I thought that was that was fun. I think it was fun. one of one of the best movies, and uh, a movie that um, convinced probably ninety percent of uh, Americans that uh, uh, Morgan Freeman is actually the president of South Africa. <laughs> like, I was actually, you know, you know the best. There was thing, always that danger. <laughs> there always is, you know. Every single time that a movie is made in South Africa, South Africa is like like a like a like the secret that we want to keep away from the world. Mm. You know what I mean? And then these idiots come in and make these movies that become blockbusters and idiots like Elon Musk leave the country and become billionaires. Like, we don't want that attention. <laughs> we like it to be like our own little corner. You know what I mean? So um, so when that movie, came, uh, when, when anything comes out from South Africa, I always watch the activity of the trolls and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the idiots. You know, go to some, go to like uh, uh, American websites, people who watch Fox News, right? And just read the comments. And it's just... So ridiculous that the people who genuinely, genuinely were baffled at how this man could act in so many movies and still be the president of South Africa. <laughs> I was, I was, I read this thing and I was just like, oh my goodness, is there more? <laughs> I want more. I want more. I want all of these people. I want to meet these people in person. It was, it, it was crazy. There are people who legit think that Morgan Freeman is the president of South Africa because of that movie. I can assure you, you don't really want to meet them. <laughs> yeah, no, true. Do you know, I mean, like definitely. So, uh, <laughs> I've got a cousin, dude. I go and visit my my cousin in New York. Yeah, right. He's a Jew, and uh, and I'm just like, yo, Phil, how about like, you know, really naive kind of. I'm like, how about sometime we we hire a car and and and. And drive across, you know, like the, the the southern states. Like, let's do that. Like two cousins together, you yeah. know. Like we could we could be like we could be like Thelma and Louise, you know. Like we, <laughs> let's let's go through the southern states. Yeah, uh, I want to see it, like yeah. cowboys and whatever it is, and yeehaw. Yeah. And he just goes, um, I don't think they really want to, you know, meet up with a New York Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine him. And I just remember thinking, from his, I mean, that almost feels like apartheid. Like, uh, there's a guy within his country telling me another about another part of his country where not only does he not want to go there, but they don't particularly want to meet him. Yeah, yeah. 
That's that that, that is uh but I, I I must say though um kudos for you uh, mm. for suggesting a um a, a Confederate road trip. Yeah. That is uh, a <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's, that a, a l- that's a really great idea. That was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I don't think that's on the cards anymore. Yeah. Although yeah. my pal uh Milo Edwards who's a stand-up comedian uh he did something similar. He got had an American girlfriend. He they they uh drove across um, probably didn't hang around. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't hang around too long. Just keep the car running. Keep it moving. <laughs> Just give me the coffee and the beer. bring them quickly. <laughs> Harry, eat, <laughs> eat, eating exclusively at drive-ins, yeah. so you don't have to get out. Because if, obviously, if you don't get out, there's less likelihood of you getting shot. I actually, I would love to do a road trip like that. I really uh, would. Exactly. I mean, like, you wouldn't. Yeah. I, 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 I had a, um, uh, there's a, there, there's a bit that I, <laughs> that I, that I actually started doing um, when I came when I when I when I came to Russia. I have this, um, you know, I, I was in, uh, I was in Red Square. It was the first first place that I went to. I mean, how touristy is that? Sure. You got to go to Red like Square. You got to, yeah. Right. And uh, I get to Red Square, and there's so much amazing stuff there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the Kremlin, and um, and there's uh, the mausoleum and everything. And I'm sitting there, and I was like so excited because there's like so many Instagrammable moments. So I'm like clicking away, clicking away, clicking away. But then I realized that a whole bunch of people started taking photos with me, <laughs> right? And I was like, oh man, I'm famous in Russia. This is so dope. Like they know my comedy in Moscow. Until I realized that like people were just taking photos of me because I was black, you know? And what I realized from that is that I'm not even offended by that. I'm actually quite I'm quite honored to be like the first person of color that someone's ever seen, or that they want to take a photo with me because others didn't let them, you know? To a point where I actually want to only visit the small villages mm. in Russia that have never seen black people before. So that I can convince them that I'm God. <laughs> so if they ask me questions like, why is your skin so dark? I'll just say, uh, heaven is by the sun. We're all black up there. <laughs> In one way that you are definitely a first is that you're, <laughs> you're the first person who ever made a metaphor about apartheid with uh, female mud wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your, um, you, tell me about your own... Uh, journey in comedy man i never actually thought you could do comedy Mm -hmm. right Uh, but i loved performing loved acting uh when i was five years old they actually um uh, i remember when i was i was was in grade one i think and um there was a drawing that i drew where they asked us what do you want to be when you're older just draw it Mm -hmm. and i drew a picture of michael jackson because i thought that michael jackson was a career i didn't think that he was a singer i thought that he was a career that He would never die, and if he does die, someone else will just wear his outfit, like all the Elvis Presley outfits, and that he is is in himself a industry. You know what I mean? So I wanted to become him. So I had very twisted ideas and very confused ideas about entertainment. So I I was always an actor. I still am an actor. Um, I fell into comedy by mistake because, um, you know, I I was watching a fashion show with a friend at a school. Long story short, I cracked this joke to my friend, and I'm like... I was, I was actually just being cheeky. I was very cocky back then. And I was just being cheeky. And I was like, oh, my God, this MC is so bad. And he looks at me. He's like, what, do you think you could do better? And I'm like, yeah, I probably could. Now, it was it was a fashion show at his school. I went to a very different school to him. And um, I'm outside during the break. We're having like a, a, a Coke or whatever. And um, and he comes back and he's like, oh, yeah, I spoke to the organizers. You're the MC now. And I'm like, my body was made of questions. How did you do this? How rude is this? This is ridiculous. What's wrong with you? shit, now I need to actually do something. Okay, I'm actually going to have to like prepare or whatever, whatever. And um, and I ad-libbed my way through this whole thing, right? How old were you? I was 17. Oh, wow. So I ad-libbed my way through this, but doing a character that I had done in school. And oh, there, was yeah. this, there was this character that I had done in a play called uh, The Ugly Nunus by uh, Matthew Buckland. And I, um, um, in, in, in that particular role... I squinted my eyes and I did um, and I did sort of like an uneducated black South African accent, right? So I was standing there in front of people and I was like, hey, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming tonight. Hey, why are you laughing? What are you laughing at? Don't look at me with those, uh, those eyes. Don't, I'll look at you with my eyes. And you know, I was just going crazy. And it was this character that allows me to lose my mind, yeah. you know? So I'm losing my mind. I'm ad living and all this and everything. And people are loving it. They're eating it up. I'm introducing all the, 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 the people who got to come into the ramp. And that was it, 
it was beautiful after the after the show like there's about five ten people who are kind of like huddled around trying to like ask me questions and um what i didn't realize is that there was a radio dj at the time uh, who was in the audience and he was with um he was sitting next to a lady by the name of kerry who was an agent for Joe Parker. Joe Parker is one of the most legendary comedians in South Africa. Um, he's probably in his 70s, 80s. Like he's been in the game for probably six, 50 years, right? So they say to me, uh, so Kerry hands me a card and she's like, um, have you ever thought of doing stand-up? And I was like, I didn't think that that was the thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, two weeks later, I did my first ever performance, my first ever performance. Mm. And I thought that I could just do the same thing. Squint my eyes, mm. put on a character, mm. get on stage. They're going to love me. You know, yeah. I get backstage and I was like, you know, there's some heavy hitters back there. It was like uh, Chris Forrest and uh, Joey Restine and like big names at the time. And they were like nervous and preparing and breathing and what, 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 what. And anyway, I was like, uh, I was so cocky then that I was just like, oh, these guys actually have to prepare. I'm just going to ad lib. I'm going to be so big in the industry. No, no, no. Anyway, I get on stage. I'm doing my whole ad lib thing. I'm doing the squint eyes. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> no one is laughing. Really? Absolutely no one is laughing. Right. First time bomber. First time bomber. And it was bad. It was really bad. It was so bad that um, I was supposed to. They gave me five minutes. I only did three minutes. Ooh, ouch. I did three ouch, minutes. That. All the <laughs> comics out there know. Not doing your time. Yeah. Oh, that hurts. It was the worst. And, and oh, the worst thing hurts. is I'm holding yeah. the microphone. No one's laughing. I need to. Like, I've just got a bell. I pull the parachute and um, and I and I walk off the mic. Uh, I walk off stage. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, cheers, bye, and I walk backstage. And now I'm walking through, I'm, I'm literally walking backstage um, to, 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 to the other comedians. And I realize I have the mic. And I actually, and I was just like, oh, shit, I'm so black. I took the microphone. And I walked back. <laughs> but I didn't realize that this now went through the mic into the main area where, where the audience was. And when I came back on stage, it was to uproarious laughter. Like, ridiculous, crazy laughter. This was a white audience, mm -hmm. you know? And I hadn't read the room. It was a white audience, and and, and the club was in. A, it was a club that was in a, a casino that happened to be in a not so open-minded area, you know. So the idea of this, like you know, this this black kid getting on stage talking like he actually talks. That's what they saw. They didn't see a character. They just saw a black guy talking like a stupid black guy because all black guys are stupid. And and I didn't read the room. I didn't know anything. I didn't understand. I didn't understand the art behind what it takes to actually connect with an audience. You know, it's not just jokes. So that was a really bad experience for me. Um, and because of that, I didn't do any comedy for, I think it was four years. Mm -hmm. Four years I didn't do comedy. Um, I was studying and I, and I started working. And then um, there was a club that had started in South Africa that was really big. And the first uh, it was the first time that I actually watched um, Trevor Noah perform. Mm -hmm. And he... In South Africa, we have a term called a coconut. Coconut is a derogatory term for someone who's supposedly black on the outside and white on the inside. <laughs> and uh, at, you know, like you can tell a coconut because they're educated, they're of color, they're, they're articulate, right? Um, and that's what Trevor represented. And it was the first time that I saw a comedian that I could relate to in my own particular style. We had black guys who talk like this and they tell the jokes like this. Mm -hmm. We had like really Afrikaans, you know, comedians who cracking jokes about Jan van Riebeek, you know. We had a lot of British comedians who'd moved over from Britain and been living in South Africa for so long, you know. Right. And they get on stage and they're like, hello, fucker, how are you saying, fucker? Come here. Oh, no, that looks a bit naughty there, isn't it? And like, so you had all these people and they were entertaining and they were great and and there was a wide array of it, but there was no one that I could actually look up to and say, oh, I want to get into this industry because right. that is my barometer. This right. is something that I can work towards, you know? Um, and yeah, then literally it was the first set that I saw of his and um, and then I started performing open mics pretty much. It was pretty much like almost the same year that he started out. But I mean, when he started out, it was like, it, it, was, it, was, it, it was like a whirlwind. I just, I, I think, you know, when you... With the amount of pain that he went through being, um, you know, like I'm a coconut, so like I'm mixed race on the inside. He's he's mixed race on the outside, you know. And when you when you marginalize in a society like South Africa where um, freedom is spoken about but not expressed, right, which is similar to America. Freedom is spoken about big time, but it's, it's like not really expressed, you know. So um, so what happens is you get all these ideas and, and you sit with yourself for so long mm. And, you know, and, 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 and if by chance you were able to convert that into comedy, 
it's just it's the most unbelievable thing and people right. kind of think like oh my oh my goodness these are such unique ideas yes right. they are unique ideas because the the situation of my life is unique hence why anecdotal comedy will probably be best you know mm-hmm. um so so yeah that was a that, that that was a big revelation for me and i was like you know i i need to start cracking jokes and i'll tell you straight off the bat i've bombed probably 300 times and for every single time that i bomb i come back with a better performance you know what i mean um, so when I think of my road in comedy, I have, um, I, I, I only have to thank those, whew, those, that racist audience in Bright Pan, <laughs> <laughs> because if, if it wasn't for them, they wouldn't have taught me the most important lesson about, um, about up comedy, you know? And it's a very, very deep lesson that most people don't take serious, which is if you walk off stage with the mic, shut the <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Hey man, uh, I don't know if you heard the news. Um, uh, SpaceX they they launched a rocket yeah. yesterday. Wow! And it crashed again. This is the second time. <sighs> you know what I was thinking? I can't help thinking it's kind of a theme for me. My listeners will know. It's just like <laughs> I just remember, like so. You know, the geeks have. Inherited the earth. <laughs> yes. Oh, by the way, that, speaking of uh, other billionaire geeks, um, I've got uh, some news here about uh, our favorite um, Mr. Jeff Bezos. I, I can just throw out a few a few numbers for mm-hmm. you, to, um, just to put things into context. He is stepping down as the um, CEO, I think, of Amazon. He's stepping mm-hmm. down. He's going to let someone else take over. We can say we. I can tell you that he's fifty-seven years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, they made. Ah, they employ one point one million people. Mm-hmm. Whew. Um, they made one hundred billion in sales in the last three months. Yep. Second half of this COVID shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, he started out in nineteen ninety four, and the company is worth one hundred and eighty five billion dollars. That's so ridiculous. But you know what I was thinking with these geeks? What's up, the geeks? What's up? I was just thinking to myself, <laughs> you know who? You know what? Who I'd like to speak to right now, Mumsy? You know mm. who I'd really like to get an angle from? It's the actual kids who actually bullied Elon Musk or bullied Jeff Bezos, right? Mm-hmm. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd love to know uh, how they're feeling right now. Um, if they're out, if they're not in jail. <laughs> um, I think I think that they. I just have a fantasy that because um, because because I got bullied too when I was young. Right. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. all you bullies out there. Um, mm. But um, I, I I have this fantasy, and it's probably a reality. If you if you had that much power in the digital space. Mm. Wouldn't you just block them from social media or, you know, like mess with their accounts? You know what I mean? Or maybe not block them, like just occasionally, like, you know, send something from their account that they didn't send. You know what I mean? Like just random stuff. Man, I just realized how dark I am as an individual. <laughs> Oh no! Well, we can't possibly wish you success if you're if you're if you're going to block your bullies from social media. That's the cruelest thing I've ever heard in my life. Think yeah. you're going to take a lollipop from me when I'm five? Let's see if you try poke anyone on Facebook. <laughs> no pokey for you. <laughs> yeah. Now I think I think they I think I think you know honestly the the at that level mm. you just don't care anymore. You don't. Well, Elon clearly doesn't care anymore. He's he's trying to get uh, he's trying to uh, get a group of people to fly to Mars with him. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. Now that's <laughs> that's when you really hey, don't. Who wants like... to fly to Mars with me? <laughs> that's the guy who do not care no more. That's for sure. Man. Well, maybe he can't deal with it to a point where he's like, they're still they're still on this planet. Like, I just I just need to get away from those bullies. Yeah, get me uh, away. Yeah. I'm too smart for this planet. I've got to get off this. <laughs> I can't deal with these stupid people no more. I, w- I don't blame him, really. It is sad that it crashed. You know, it's a weird, little like... bit sad. Yeah. Well, I mean, that I think that's more to do with stock prices and things like that. Mm. That's going to affect the the stock prices, all kinds of stock prices. No, I, 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 apart I, I, from I, that, I, it's all right. He'll build I, another one. No, he will. He's build a builder. That's one. what he does. Yeah. 
I was just thinking on a selfish South African, like patriotic level, like you know, when you see. Oh, like, he's South African. Yeah, this yeah. is the South African. <laughs> he is. I forgot about that. So when you see like so a, a South African fail in the global space, you're like, no, no, no. Okay, uh, we'll get him. We'll get him. No, of no, course. no. Worry. We're, we're gonna. We'll bounce back. We'll bounce back. But yeah. Of course. Uh, I did something similar recently. Oh, it was um, what was it? Um, oh, Scott. We were. I was having dinner with some friends the other uh, the other day, and the, the the movie Scott Pilgrim came up. Okay. Scott Pilgrim, and they all really liked him. We were like, we all agreed we love that movie. And mm -hmm. I went, huh? That's directed by a Brit. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. British sense of humor right there. Yes. Great movie. Um, so I do the same. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm proud for my Brits when yeah. they do well. Of you course, Jesus, especially Londoners. I, there was quite a funny another thing. I was speaking to uh, another performer that I mm. know, and she was saying that uh, they are they wanted her to be like a host of a, of an event, mm. right? Like a conference to do with tech and things like that. Yeah, yeah. She was like, yeah. So my manager said. Hey, you know, they want you to uh, be one of the faces of the, you know, just introduce, it's all on Zoom, it's yeah. all on Zoom. It's like they have an annual uh, tech conference and, you know, back and forth and we just want you to be kind of funny and do the links between this and that. And, uh, you know, um, Elon Musk's mum is going to be there. Oh, wow. And she was like, what? And as soon as I heard that, I was just like, yeah, we need to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> Because did she, did did she have did she have a fling with an alien or like what? <laughs> like what actually happened? Yeah, What's let, the story let's, can we compare him to your other kids, please? <laughs> uh, how are they getting on? Are they all? What's going on? It were you abducted by a UFO? Just just be honest. Be honest, Mrs. Musk. Be honest. Who's the father? Because <laughs> we'd like to know this. I love that. Who's the father? <laughs> Who was he? Can we get a name? Is he still with us on this planet? Mm. He, as, I, I think, as it stands, he he technically now is the richest he's man in the world. He's human. Oh, he's the richest man in the world. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think he is. Yeah, yeah technically. Yeah. I think. Yeah, but he's yeah. Tesla is weird though. <laughs> Tesla's a, a, a mystery to everybody. I think the concept of cars that drive themselves is um. It's very, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't excite me. No, me neither. It really doesn't excite me. I think a lot of people get excited by, by, by these. I'm, a, I'm an old school kind of guy, you know. I have electronic cigarettes, but they, they, they you know, for, for those of you who've never smoked, don't smoke. It's not a good, it's not a good habit. But um, for, for those of us who have been smoking for a while, uh, old school cigarette, there's, 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 it's, it's just, there's this tangible uh, tradition to it that I love. You know, it's like, um, uh, you know, all these new toys that are coming out for people when they're getting intimate. Like, you know, I, I like it old school, mm -hmm. you know. Um, when it comes to cars, it's nice It's nice to drive a car yourself and to actually, like, have that experience with a human being. You know, if, um, if you take away that element of that journey, I... I hate that we have less moments to have fun and to be funny. Mm -hmm. It's just too quick, mm -hmm. right? There was a time where um, uh, I don't know, like what 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 um, um, what era you would have come from, right? But do you remember? Do you ever remember the um, those phones that used to? <laughs> of course. What right. are they called? The I, I can't remember. It was like <laughs> roller something. Well, the yeah, ones, the yeah, ones yeah. with those roller rotary dials. phones. Rotary phones. Rotary yes. phones. Rotary I remember. Phones. I remember rotary yeah, yeah. phones. Of course. Now, if you if you think back to any like just. Don't like, don't even like. You don't even have to try and be funny about the moment, but just think about all the funny things that actually happened mm. with rotary phones. Mm. You get to like the ninth, like the ninth digits, and then on number ten, you mess it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you think to yourself, "Oh my goodness, this is like taking three minutes out of my day." You know what I mean? But but there was so much more time to enjoy the moment and not have to and not to, and not have to be pressurized into making that moment golden, mm. right? Yeah. But when you take that time away the time of the of, of, of the act, now there's just so much pressure for everything to be instantly amazing. And it creates like a very unrealistic perspective for the world that we live in. People don't walk around talking like a Seinfeld episode. It's not how life works. You know what I mean? To get to that level, you have to understand those moments. And then when you get good enough, you are able to manipulate those moments together. And if you do it over time, you, you naturally become better at it. That is second nature. But I hate the pressure that we live in that like, 
Now that now that no one's driving, what's gonna happen? Now I gotta talk to my girlfriend for another twenty five minutes. <laughs> oh no. When you put it like that. It's ridiculous. You know Elon I mean? Musk, self driving cars are bad for comedy. He's <laughs> way looking for funny things that go wrong, I suppose, every mm, day, aren't we? Mm. That's what we're doing. Mumsy, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. Absolute pleasure, bro. Great thank to you. meet you. you and too. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick uh, shout out to our listeners, as I did as I did last week, because I can check who's been listening. And we are we still got listeners in Belarus. Big up. Just to let you know, uh, Lukashenko is still who I think about when I'm trying not to come. Um, <laughs> Kazakhstan, as always. Uh, Thailand. What's up? Kap, kap, kap on kap to Thailand. Hello there for Sawadee listening. Sawadi kap. Sawadi kap. kap. <laughs> Sorry, I got it wrong. Sawadi kap to Thailand. What's up? How you doing? I'll be out there soon. And Czech Republic in the house. Uh, some uh, some Peda Czech, Pavel Medved going on. What's nice. up, Czechs? Check it, check it out. God bless you. Uh, listen, uh, take care of yourselves. And uh, remember, if you happen to not be very interesting at all, the least you can do is have good manners. Peace. Peace.